my dog just pooped all over my floor. So I'm just gonna stay in here until I have the nerve to clean it up. Hello everyone, my name is Sydney and this is my third video I've filmed today because I'm falling behind. So this is going to be a little bit more rushed, but I'm really gonna try and get all the facts that I need to get out there, so bear with me. Today I'm going to be doing my post-read full analysis and review of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This was my summer reading book and I actually really enjoyed it. I was not intimidated, I was just kind of like dreading it. Like I just want to spend my vacation not worrying about this book and the deadline that I need to meet. But I actually really enjoyed it, it was a really great book. I give it four out of five stars as I said in my weeping read-along vlog which you can watch. Uh, the link will be down below. So basically what this is about is Victor Frankenstein I know, short disclaimer, Frankenstein is not the name of the monster, Frankenstein is the doctor. Victor Frankenstein is really enthralled by science and chemistry and anatomy and creating life from matter. And one day, after years and years of labor, he creates a monster. He creates human life. Now, it doesn't look human. It looks like a monster. After he immediately animates this being, he regrets it and runs, and this book is just about the consequences that follow. It makes you think about the value of human life, even if it is somewhat distorted or messed with, and just where to draw the line on humanity, which is super thought-provoking. And you know, <laughs> to all those unintelligent classmates of mine or those out there that had to read this and didn't see that, look again, because there's plenty of nuggets to pick from there. So that's all I'm going to say. If you have not read it, I would not watch this video first. I would watch more of my readathon because I literally said everything as I was reading. Now, you still need to read it yourself, but you know, go to the read along first and then come here. So to all my non-spoilers, goodbye. It was nice knowing you. Let's get it. The book basically starts off with a series of letters from Walton, Robert Walton, I think was his name. Yes, Robert Walton, to his sister back in England. And he's writing about how he's on this great adventure, a voyage on the seas. And then on one of the letters, he talks about seeing a man on like an ice-coated island by himself, almost frozen to death, and he takes him aboard the ship and tries to, you know, nurse him back to health almost. And he's like, how'd you end up here? And the guy's like, all right, let me tell you my story. And the whole book is basically Robert Walton writing down Victor Frankenstein's story. Victor Frankenstein is the one who they pick up off the frozen mountain, basically. And it is all about Frankenstein talking about how he animated this monster to life and how he faced deep consequences for it. For all of my school people who I actually do know, we had to annotate this book. So that means on every page, you gotta be marking that thing. So that's why it took me so long to read this. It's a pretty fast paced book. You just gotta get through some of the slow parts and the annotations. The annotations are what killed me. I'm not gonna tell you what to annotate because that's part of my grade and I'm not gonna sacrifice that. So you just have to read it yourself and annotate it to the best of your ability. Mary Shelley uses a lot of big words in here. So if you don't know what that means, just the thesaurus it. It's not old English, it, but it is written in an earlier time than the now. Countenance was a big one for me. Countenance just means mannerism and being. Like his countenance was sad. His mood, his disposition, his person was sad. Does that make any sense? So at the beginning it talks about Victor's growing up. His dad rescued his mom from poverty when she was younger and she was nursing her sick father and then he died and then Victor's dad saved the girl whose name was Caroline and then they became man and wife and then they had Victor, William, they adopted Elizabeth and there was another one. It was like Ernest, I think was his name. So there's four kids, three boys, one girl. And they're growing up just fine. And Victor's the oldest. And so the next one was Elizabeth and they adopted Elizabeth. So when they adopted her, they're like, Victor, we have a present for you. We will give it to you tomorrow. And then it's a new sister. But Victor literally took it as this is his person. Like he is in charge of taking care of her and making sure she is safe and so forth and so on. Keep that in mind as we keep going. So then Victor gets older and he is going to go to university or college and schooling. So he leaves Geneva, I think is how you say it. I think that's Germany to go to England. Correct me if I'm wrong. He leaves for school. That's all you really need to know. And he is super involved with the science department. He's just ensnared by all this knowledge and it's enriching him and he loves it and he can't get enough of it. And he decides that he wants to create human life out of 
matter and see if he can make that come to be. It takes him about two years to get this project together, get all the materials, study anatomy, everything in between, and then finally he brings the monster to life. And no, um, I was really disappointed when there was no, it's alive, it's alive. Yeah, that didn't happen, sorry. But as soon as he brings the monster to life, he regrets it and runs out and leaves the monster just to fend for himself. And keep in mind, this monster is basically a newborn in like an adult body, but like super adult. Superhuman speed, really tall, yellowy skin, demon eyes almost is what I think he said. Basically, visually, he's not very pleasing. He's very scary. Time passes and Victor is just clouded with depression and anxiety and hopelessness because this monster just freaked him out and took everything out of him. And his friend Clairvol comes up and nurses him back to health. MVP friend right there. And then Victor finds out that his youngest brother, William, who was just a kid, has been murdered. He has to come home and he realizes that the details around his murder are that he was strangled to death. There are handprints on his neck and he immediately assumes it's the monster. But then he gets home and Justine, if you did not read about her, you're not going to know who it is and I'm not going to give you that piece of information. So you got to read the book to know that. This girl named Justine is presumed the killer. Like she's convicted for the crime and there's proof of it in a portrait of their mother, like William's mother, the kid and Victor's and Elizabeth's, that was in William's pocket, I think, and now Justine somehow has it, which is circumstantial evidence, but it gets her killed. And we find out that, yeah, the monster did it to William. So now Victor is mentally and basically held responsible for the death of his youngest brother and Justine. He's got two murders on his head, which is not so hot for our unstable, mentally troubled Victor Frankenstein. So he decides to run away from his house because he feels so guilty and he goes up into the mountainside and just as he sees the beauty of nature, he's just like, let me have this moment of peace or rob everything from me entirely. And <laughs> he gets option B. That's when the monster shows up again and he's not going to try and kill Victor. He's going to talk with him. It's been two years since he ran out on his monster once he created him and now when they're on the mountainside and the monster says you're gonna listen to me talk and then you're gonna hear my negotiation or we're gonna duke it out and fight and so he's like all right i guess so here we go so the monster i called him nikolai in my read along so i'm gonna keep calling him nikolai nikolai talks about how he had to learn everything he knows about human society and life and language from these cottagers that were his neighbors in his little hideout hut. There was an old man, there was a young man, a young girl, and then an Arabian girl. Felix is the young man, DeLacy is the old man, Safi is the Arabian, and Agatha is the girl. So Felix and Safi are brought together because they have a relationship. Felix bailed out a Turk who just happened to be Safi's dad and as payment for bailing him out of trouble because he was a nuisance in the government. He was like, you can have my daughter's hand in marriage. And he was like, well, heck yeah, she's heckin' pretty. I love her. And they do fall in love. It's not just looks alone. But then things go south with that and they get split up and DeLacy and Agatha are held in jail for five months because Felix bailed out a criminal, basically. And the government found out about that. They were stripped of their wealth and riches and the Turk and Safi left and then the rest of the family went and lived in poverty and eventually Safi found her way back to Felix and then he was happy again and Nikolai was there to watch that so he learned music from there he learned social interaction and it was just really sad and sobering to watch him just see human life go by but him not get to have that connection I really pitied him honestly long story short he eventually decides to try and meet the cottagers because he's been taking care of them in a way like from afar like bringing them firewood and getting them food because you know they are impoverished and so he goes to the old man because the old man is blind while everyone else in the house is away because he knows that he is not physically attractive like he is physically alarming and scary and monstrous so he goes to the blind man and he's asking for help because he's a traveler he needs somewhere warm to be then they all walk in and they see Nikolai and they start beating him and running away from him and telling the old man to run for his life because he's in trouble when he was only just trying to help and so he runs off he's really sad and so he starts heading for Victor because he's pissed that the the only people that he ever knew and maybe loved hate him and have moved houses to get away from him. So he goes back to track down Victor and he goes back to his place of birth which is Geneva and that is where he finds William and he's not gonna decide to kill him. He's still hoping in society. He's like if I can just capture this kid and educate him to be my friend 
I won't be alone. So he tries and takes the kid, but he's like, no, my papa's gonna punish you. Don't touch me, put me down. You know, at first he's like, well, I don't care about your dad. You're coming with me. I'm not gonna hurt you. And he's like, no, my papa's gonna get you. He's Frankenstein. He won't let you get away. Oh, you belong to my enemy. You're my first victim then. And I don't think he was gonna kill him because he's going to silence him like by closing off his vocal cords, but his strength is so bad, he just killed him right then and there. And then he framed Justine by putting the portrait that he had in his pocket into her clothing. But he was abhorred from society and just thrown out and shut out and was alone. And he was really lonely, he was sad. And that's why he did all these things. He didn't mean to cause any trouble, but everything just turned their backs on him. And that's when he became like a traitor to it all. And so then he's like, all right, my condition to stop this is you need to make a female of my kind so that I have a companion and then if you do that me and my wife or my bride of Frankenstein there it is are going to escape and flee human society for the rest of our lives at first Victor's like no way in heck am I gonna do that but eventually he consents because Duh. Otherwise the book wouldn't keep going. So he spends time making this female creature and along the way his dad is talking about his mental health, how it's failing again, and he's like, does this have anything to do with the fact that you and Elizabeth are gonna get married? And at first I was like, what the heck? Elizabeth, that's a sister. Well, I guess they are gonna be man and wife because I guess that's just how it rolled back in the 18 whatevers or whatever period this time is set. I'm pretty sure it's the 1800s. And he's like, no, if anything, Elizabeth is one of the only ones that has kept me sane. Victor gets back to work on the bride for Nikolai and as he's working he sees Nikolai out of the corner of his eyes in a window staring down at him and smiling and that's when he just like comes apart. He breaks the monster that he's working on like totally destroys it throws the pieces into the water and it makes Nikolai go bat heckin crazy and because he destroyed the bride that he was making for Nikolai Nikolai was like all right since you did this, I'm gonna be with you on your wedding night. And so Victor decides to go into a boat and sleep on the water for the night, look for some peace, maybe even drown. I don't know, he's pretty hopeless at this point. He wakes up on another island, I guess, and they're thinking that he is the main suspect for the murder of his best friend, revenge killing, body count, Three. Things are not looking up for him and he goes into trial and he gets bailed out because they know it's not him, long story short. But he knows the monster did it so he needs to go home, he gets married to Elizabeth and on their wedding night, honeymoon night, whatever, they go to a cottage. He thinks that the monster is gonna go after him. So he tells Elizabeth to go into the cottage, like retire for the night so that he can get ready to fight him and Elizabeth won't be in his way or get hurt. I feel like that was just the stupidest move you could do because if he has killed your friend, killed your younger brother, and killed another girl, why would you leave your wife alone? Why would you do it? Nikolai gets Elizabeth, kills Elizabeth. After Elizabeth dies and news breaks that Elizabeth has been murdered, Victor's dad dies. Everyone that he has ever known is dead, basically. Finally, Victor's like, you know what? I'm just gonna devote the rest of my life to finding this monster and just killing him because he has killed everything. And then maybe I can just kill myself. He's just in such a dark mental place and it's just so heartbreaking to watch him. And so he's exploring every everywhere for this guy. And that's how he ends up in the north and that's how Robert Walton's ship picks him up. Eventually, Victor Frankenstein does die on the ship even though they were like, we can turn back and go to England instead of continue on so that you can be healthy again. He's like, no, you shouldn't have to do that because of me. It's okay if I just die here. And he does die on the ship. But right before that, Robert Walton writes one more letter back to his sister in England saying, this is all what happened. I believe him. I believe his story. And after Victor dies, Robert is kind of just walking around the ship and then he hears a noise from Victor's cabin almost, or his cabin that he was keeping Victor in. And he goes in and it's Nikolai, it's the monster. And he's weeping over his dead master and dead creator because even though they were at odds, he was all he had. And he was just sobbing and he was like, I am so sorry that I was ever an instrument of evil. I brought this in upon myself. I feel terrible. Look what I have reduced him to. Look what I have done to the world. It's time for me to die too. And he walks off into the darkness. And that's the book. Basically, I just did my entire read-along vlog, but with more sanity in my voice. I didn't cry, I didn't flinch, scream, whatever. It was a really good book. I highly recommend you read it in full. But yeah, that's all I've got. That was my Frankenstein review and analysis. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe so that I can make more videos for more people who watch. I hope this helped all of you out because I know this helped me. I'm pretty much gonna be set for the reading quizzes. I don't know what's on it though, full disclaimer. I'm just gonna say if teachers are gonna get on to me because I'm helping y'all with some comprehension, like no offense, but they can bite me because I don't know what's gonna be on your quizzes. I don't know what's gonna be on your tests. I haven't been your student. 
student yet. I haven't had any people in the grades above me tell me what you are going to require of me. This is just what I have gotten out of the book. This is just me talking to a camera about what I felt and what I learned. And isn't that what we're supposed to do in a classroom setting? Now I'm just better equipped for it. And so are your other classmates. So you don't have to drag an answer out of us that we don't have. <sighs> so yeah, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Once more, my name is Sydney. I make new videos every Thursday. And until next time, bye.